Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for our next contest of the evening. Three five-minute rounds of fighting in the welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler with a professional record of four wins, four losses. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall and weighed in at 170 pounds from Slough, England. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shaw, no pain, who his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial arts fighter with a professional record of eight wins, four losses. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall and weighed in at 171 pounds. From Nottingham, England, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dean Renegade Amasinger. And when the action gets underway, your referee for this contest is Mark Woodard. Right, so here we go, and we'll see now, as you said, Pierre, what Shah Hussein has learned from that defeat at Bama 4, because it will have to be a steep learning curve because he's got a high-quality opponent in there against him. Now, Shah Hussein was introduced as a wrestler. Um, Amazinger, I believe, has the edge on the stand-up, so look for Shah Hussein to possibly break down that distance and try to go for the takedown early in the first. As you said, that Amazinger, a good leg kick, <laughs> and then he goes for the takedown. Isn't that MMA for you, Pierre? Now, Amazinger, again, you know, he changed levels, got the double leg, and he's been rewarded. He's in the guard of one Shah Hussein. Talking about numbers, Shah Hussein's, most of his uh, defeats have been by submission. And Amazinger has to have looked up on the tape, looked at his weaknesses, and, you know, definitely trying to implement his game plan and force the submission game here early. It's like two sharp elbows from Dean there on the floor to Shah. And a third comes down there again, Pierre. Dangerous times for Shah Hussein. Yeah, Shah Hussein needs to, now look at him. He's trying to throw the hips over, going for an arm bar. Amazinger saw that coming a mile away pulled the arm out and now it's a weird position that Shah Hussein finds himself in. Well it could be, a, oh he was almost given his back there but at the moment it's all Dean Amazinger here against Shah Hussein early in this first of scheduled three rounds. Now Amazinger is doing the right things, he's cross facing small shots, the elbows, you don't need a lot of room to throw those however you can cut somebody very easily with that and he's really grinding on him here in the first. Now, the thing that I'd like to see Shah Hussein do is possibly try to get that top position or, at a minimum, try to tie Amazinger up. Because at the moment, although he's doing all the work, there's an economy about Amazinger that is impressive as well, isn't it? You mentioned that he's doing the right things without seeming to have to work too hard. Right. It's those small movements. That, you know, you get a lot for a little, if you know what I mean. Cross body there by Amazinger. Very good base. Floating. Maybe going to a north-south position, however. And he's got a really good base, Amazinger, from that top position. Steps over, looking for a possible step over. Now, he could have went for a crucifix, which yep. would have tied both arms up of Shah Hussein. I was going to say, he did have the one arm neatly tied up. It's slightly different now. But it has been all Dean Amazinger at the moment. Indeed, Amazinger is really, really pushing that top game. And I tell you what is worse than anything is having somebody riding you from that top position that has a great base. Now look at this here. He's locked the arm over. He's going to look to throw some leather here because both arms are pinned in this crucifix position. Yes, dangerous moments for Shah Hussein now. Now it looks like Shah Hussein was able to get that arm out. Checking the hips of Dean Amazinger. Now he's back to all fours. Amazinger looks like he's going for a possible Darce choke. I'm not sure from the angle here. Now look at that. That was a little bit of a gymnastic move there from Shah Hussein. But Pierre, if we look at it in perspective with um, the clock ticking down in this first round now, he's been under the cosh right from the start. He's been given no chance to work his way into this round, has he? No, Dean Amazinger has shut down any chance of making space by Shah Hussein. I mean, he, anytime he moves, Dean Amazinger's there to shut it down. Look, Amazinger's looking very, very impressive here in the first. What impresses 
me, Pierre, is the way he's going about business. It's so calm and collected. And I said, there's that economy like there of motion and movement. And the only way that you're able to use that economical um, use of energy is being technical. He's using the technical versus the strength to shut Shah Hussein's game down here in the first. The other thing that's worth mentioning that you mentioned earlier is the fact that let's take Amazinga's game out of the way, Hussein, it's a hard night's work in just the first round. Under pressure for so long, we can already see him breathing heavily. And not only the physical part, let's talk about the mental heart. Amazinga has literally taken his heart out and just, you know, stomped on it. Again, it's one thing to be able to be competitive, and it's another thing to have a guy just grinding on you for the whole first round. And he's going to have doubts when he goes back into his corner. Well, we're into almost the last 30 seconds of the round. Finally stood up, but that's been the first time you realize in the full five-minute round that they've been back on their feet. Big right round to the body there. Amazinger just launches that kick into the floating ribs of Shah Hussein. And again, they're in the double, uh, excuse me, they're, they're going for a tie clinch, not tie clinch, they're going for a wrestling clinch here. And you see Shah Hussein trying to angle out, trying to get some space, maybe to pummel back in for an over-under to where it's a 50-50. But at the moment, with the, the time ending in this round, he has been owned, hasn't he, in this first round by Dean Amazinger. I would be very surprised if any of the judges have scored that in favor of Shah Hussein. I think that was a dominant performance there from Dean Amazinger, and uh, I think he left no doubt as to who won that first round. Now, we're looking at Dean's corner. There, there wouldn't be much they'd want to say to him, really, except to keep this up and maybe look for the openings, because he almost had that crucifix in, ready to ground and pound. And to be fair to Shah Hussein, he hasn't given much in reply that could worry Dean Amazinger's camp. No, he hasn't, but the one thing that Shah Hussein has done is he hasn't been content to stay in one spot. Granted, Amazinger was able to base him out and really take his back and do a lot of things. However, Shah Hussein never gave up and was consistently trying to better his position. So we have the second of potentially three rounds coming up. Big, big first round for Dean Amazinger. I imagine his corner saying, just keep up more of the same. What would you like to see Shah Hussein do this round, though? Because he got taken down very early in the first pair. Well, I think he needs to be more active on his footwork, not stay stationary, because when you're stationary, you're uh, more of a target for takedowns. And I think he needs to be more active with the striking. But again, as we saw there, the man doing the striking was Dean Amazinger. And he's taking his man down almost at will again. This is hard times for Shah Hussein. Now, Amazinger went in a straight line, and so did Shah Hussein. If you keep going in a straight line, sooner or later, percentage-wise, you're going to score with either the strikes or the takedown. Shah Hussein needs to start working the circles, trying to turn off the opponent, and make Dean try to change his course, you know, going off the straight line and try to turn into him. As it is, we're in a similar position. We were right in the opening of the first round, with Amazinger again looking to tie up the arms of Shah Hussein. Do you think Shah can go another full five minutes from this position without something finally getting him? Again, it's a law of averages. The, you know, the more that Amazinger pushes the pace, closes down, you know, uh, locks him down with his good base, yeah, he's going to sneak something in. It could be a game ender. Well, he sneaked a short, short um, elbow there, but this time, as you said, Hussein, to his credit, as you mentioned in the first round, has always been looking to escape, but. Amazinger is very quick to recover that ground. Well, not only that, Amazinger just seems to be that one little step ahead of Hussein. Lutador there on the back of Amazinger. Well, that's climbing up high for a possible triangle choke, almost into an umaplata. However, Amazinger was very key on that and immediately passes the leg straight back into the side now and every opportunity he just drops those little elbows as well and you see how easily cuts can form and change a fight completely Pierre. Yeah and I think another thing that I like about Amazinger is he doesn't lay in prey. He gets that dominant position but he's constantly moving. He's jockeying for position. He's throwing in those short little shots like the elbows and he's really grinding on Shah Hussein. And I tell you what, that makes for a long, long night. Well, the second round has followed the similar pattern to the first, and as you mentioned, 
Hussein is always busy, but he's never managed to get that distance between the two of them. He took a solid knee there again as well. And now he's on all fours, trying to go two on one with the hands. However, Amazinger is cross-facing, moving out to the side, setting his left hook in. Now, Shai, I'd like to see him stand right up, prevent Amazinger from setting in that uh, right far side hook with the legs. Well, for me, Pierre, I might be wrong, but he just looks very, very tired at the moment. Well, he's had to be. He's been carrying Amazinger's weight for the whole two rounds. Well, finally, he does get back upright, and this is where he needs to be because he's been owned on the ground. He has to get, and again, he has to try and get some sort of stand-up momentum going here. Now, Shah Hussein was trying to actively work the guillotine. However, uh, Amazinger prevented that connection by... Uh, making the connection on the legs and slamming them out into that side position. So once he's out to that side position, uh, there's no potential for that guillotine to lock in and tap him out. Well, at the moment, it's a comfortable night's work for Dean Amazinger. Everything he's tried is working. If you're in Dean's corner now, everything's going well for him, but is there anything you could see that maybe he could still do to make this end earlier than it is? I mean, how can you, you know, really tell him what to do when he's done everything right you know what I mean it's uh I think he's done everything the way that he's trained it he's really oh now saying that he caught a, a foot jab on the way in however immediately goes back to that double leg Shai Hussein jumps guard um I think the head is going to pop out yeah didn't really have that secured in deeply enough to really threaten Amazinger but one thing we noticed, and we saw the same in, in Bama 4, is the durability of Shah Hussein, and as we're seeing here, so he's always a threat. And with mixed martial arts, you're losing, you're, you're losing, you're losing, a small opening, bang, legs up, triangle, you win. It's, that's what makes this sport so exciting. The tables can turn at any minute. Well, he's got less than a minute now to turn those tables. In fact, he's got just about half a minute. And really, it's a sense of deja vu from that round one, Pierre. Yeah, but you know what? Did we expect anything less from Dean Amaziger? He's training out of uh, Team Roughhouse. He's got people like Hardy, Daly, Wallhead, who we'll see later on tonight in the main event. And I'll tell you what, they will have put him through his paces and made sure that at Bama, the best Dean Amaziger showed up tonight. Well, he's caused all sorts of problems for Shah Hussein, and it's been a hard night's work for Shah. Most of it spent on his back with Amazinger there. And you wonder, Pierre, just how he can turn this around, because if I was in Dean Amazinger's corner, I'd be saying just more of the same. If we're going to grind out a points victory, this is the way we're going to do it. What can Shah do? I think Shah's going to have to be more aggressive on the stand-up. I think he's really going to have to look for that knockout of the submission. That's the only way that he's going to pull this win out. But he's got to get that fire lit underneath him. And the only way for that is his corner needs to be in his ear saying, Shah, you're down two rounds to nothing. If you're going to make it happen, it needs to happen here in the third. And something you mentioned at the very beginning of the first, which has made those takedowns easy. He needs some lateral movement in there as well to make Amazinger work for the takedown. He's not had to work for the takedown, has he? Not at all, because if your partner is going to oblige you by standing in front of you, even if he's doing a back foot movement, you're still going to A, connect with the punches, or B, drive him up against the fence, which we've seen him do repeatedly to Shah Hussein. And again, every time he's made that connection, gotten the legs, it's resulted in an Amazinger takedown. Yeah, so we're approaching the third and final round. It's been a shutout so far for Dean Amazinger. Shah Hussein, moments on his back but we really need to see some stand-up offense from him because this fight's just running away from him. Well, saying that, Shah Hussein did have some, you know, flashes in the pan. When he throws those legs up, he's really throwing them up very quickly. He can maybe possibly catch Amazinger out. However, we need more of the same. He needs to be running those submissions and like uh, a punching combination. And again, Amazinger with another takedown. The problem is he knows where he is, doesn't he? He just goes forward and we end up here and those smart little elbows come in and then he goes to work. And now he's faced with a situation where the clock is ticking for the final time. Yep, yeah, you see Shah Hussein with uh, some Gracie-esque heel kicks to the uh, the back of the kidneys or the, to his back. Um, and again, he's just trying to do whatever he can to cause something to happen. Because for Shah Hussein, if something doesn't happen, again, Amazinger is totally walking away with this fight.
Shah Hussein trying to create some space, looking for a possible sweep there. However, Amazinger saw it coming, dropped down his base, a uh, partial sprawl, and ends up in the uh, half butterfly of Shah Hussein. Some things we've seen on a regular basis, Pierre, is even the fighter that's losing can get into this set mindset with the person that's winning, and they go through the same formula which we've seen in these three rounds. There's been no attempt, has there, by Shah to change tactics or, or, or jolly things up for one of the better terms. Yeah. Now, going back to what you said about Dean Amazinger, what would you tell a Dean Amazinger? Right now, what I would tell him is don't be content to jog with your opponent when you can sprint. So if he picks up the pace, I believe that he could actually end this fight and walk away with an, ex, you know, an exclamation point here tonight. Something happened there. It looks they both nodded and they're back up right. Oh, good high point kick for the first time from Shah Hussein. A little sense of desperation there by Shah Hussein. He's looking to throw some shots, short shots there. However, body lock there by Dean Amazinger. And but again, when, when you're that far behind, Pierre, sometimes those desperation stakes can actually work for you. It's a good kick, and he's got, in real terms, nothing to lose. If this goes to time, he's lost. Oh, without a doubt. And I, I think Dean Amazinger, again, doing more of the same. Look at this here, turning him out. Shah Hussein now, for the first time, has Dean Amazinger's back against the cage. Well, he needs to stop it. He tried the high knee there, bringing up. But again, he has to, he can't afford to be in this position, Pierre, with the clock in the last round. And again, it's about that sense of desperation. He needs to be doing anything and everything, running together combinations. Uh, let's do some dirty boxing. Now look at this here. Amazinger immediately turns it out. And again, a very uh, familiar deja vu almost, you know, with Shah Hussein's back up against the cage. Well, well in this fight, the clock is Dean Amazinger's friend. He, he's done all the work, he's done all the hard work. We need Shah to really go for broke now at the end here. Now look at this here. Dean Amazinger may be showing signs of gassing. This would be up. an upset here with one and a half minutes left. Dean cannot let him take control and get a submission or a knockout. That's the only way he's going to fight. Now look at this here. Very veteran move. Pin him against the cage. And listen, watch that clock run down. Like you said, the clock here is Dean Amazinger's friend. Now that was the last thing that Shah Hussein wanted with that small amount of momentum that he built up. And I tell you what, I, I'm not going to lie, I was holding my breath a little bit because for Dean Amazinger to put the foundation for such a one-sided win and then to see Shah Hussein, you know, that sense of de desperation, maybe possibly catching a sub or a huge knockout, wow, that would have been an upset. Well, we're in under a minute now, and we're back into familiar territory for both men. And he'll, I think when Shah Hussein watches his back and sees those flashes, to maybe be a bit more aggressive, or, or just try that a little bit more, I think he'll be very disappointed when he watches this. Now, also, Shah Hussein is a southpaw. You know, let's try to get on the outside leg of Dean Amazinger and throw that straight left down the pipe. Let's throw that last Hail Mary pass and see if we can win the game. Well, that looks very unlikely now. And even with the, those last minute and a half, really, you wouldn't even give Shah a share of the third round if it stays like this. So it's going to be, a, I feel, a three-round shutout to Dean Amazinger with, with a very, very dominant performance. And again, we see why he made it into the UFC fighter house. Uh, we see why he's considered one of the best here tonight. And this was a last opportunity for Shah Hussein, I believe, because I believe if he uh, up his tempo and really tried working his stand-up in conjunction with his ground game. It may have been a different fight. Who knows?
After three five-minute rounds, the judges have decided on a unanimous decision, declaring the winner out of the blue corner, Dean Renegade Amasinger.